In this video, let's take a look at how we can implement an input validation algorithm into Python. So you'll often need some sort of input validation algorithm when you want to get some input from the user, but the user may not necessarily enter the correct form of the data. So for example, if you want to enter your age, then let's say the user enters something that's not a positive integer. Well, then you want to actually check to see if it is a positive integer. If it's not a positive integer, if it doesn't satisfy your condition, then you want to give some sort of error message and keep getting input until you get the correct input. So that's a very simple example of how we can use input validation. Of course, there are more complicated examples. So let's take a look at a few examples here before we actually implement this. So on this first line, this function right here, this is going to be the final function that we write. We'll take a look at this after going through all these examples. But this first line right here, we're getting name and we just want to get normal input. Anything is fine in the name category because all we're looking for here is a string. Now it gets a little bit more complicated when we go for age. With an age, we want it to be an integer and we want it to be a positive integer. And then we can get even more complicated by giving some sort of error message. So in this example, we have our height and we want to get it as a float that is also greater than zero. And we wanna give some sort of error message in case there's a very specific thing that we need the user to do. So here we just wanna say that's not a valid height. And then this is actually one of the most complicated examples we're gonna look at here. So it's often the case that you want to get integer input. Well, if you don't actually get your input in a correct form, then you want to selectively give an error message. So here we'll say that make sure to separate your integers with a single space. So this algorithm we're going to implement after going through these examples is going to be able to do all of these things here. So let's actually run this and see what this output looks like. So we can just run this here and I can enter some random name, John Smith. Let's say the age, let's say I put something that's not an integer, not a positive integer. So let's say I put just POA. Well, then we're gonna get an invalid input response and then we're going to have to enter in another age. So maybe I might enter negative 81 this time. Well, now I have an integer, but I don't have a positive integer. So I get an invalid input again. And then I'd have to enter something maybe like 20. And in this case, I have a positive integer, so it satisfies my condition. Now let's move on to height. So let's say I enter some invalid input once again. Well, here I'm going to get that's not a valid height because of course this is not a valid height. And of course I can even enter negative 0.6 and that's also not going to be valid height because of the condition we specified that it must be positive. And then notice that these messages are both custom messages. These aren't the same as these invalid input messages. And finally, we can enter our height. We can say something like 43 just to get past that. And now we have to enter some integers. So let's say I enter something in an incorrect format. So this has to be space separated according to how we want to enter it. So maybe I might say five, four, three, two, and then maybe E. Well, I'm gonna get an invalid input because we need to make sure that we separate our integers, not only with a single space, but also that we have only integers. So let's fix this. We'll instead say five, four, three, two, one. And finally, we proceed to lines 25 and 26, where we print our data and our list of numbers, as well as performing a summation on the numbers. So we can start by declaring our get input function. So we'll say def get input. And then there are four parameters that we're going to need here. We're going to need a prompt parameter and we'll just default this to an empty string. So this is gonna be the prompt that we ask the user. And then we're going to need a cast parameter. Let's just default this to none. So cast is going to be a function that the user provides when they're actually calling get input so that they can convert their data to anything that they need to. So like they can convert it to an int or a float or do some selective converting. So we'll say cast equals none. And then the third parameter we need is condition. We'll set that equal to none as a default value. And condition is just going to be the condition that we checked to make sure that our input, once we've casted it to the correct data type or to the correct form, is actually abiding by the rules that we want it to follow. So condition equals none. And then finally, if the condition fails or if we get some sort of error when we try to cast, we're going to give an error message. So error message is equal to none. We'll just default it to none. And that's in the event that we don't want to provide a custom error message. Now inside the body of this function, we're going to make use of an infinite loop. So we'll say while true. And the reason for this is because we want to keep asking the user for input until they enter the correct thing. And the moment they enter the correct thing, we're going to return 
a response out of this function. So when we call the return statement, it's immediately going to terminate this function and the loop will be broken. So we'll say while true. And now we're going to make use of some error handling. So we'll say try. So that's going to check to see if we've actually given correct data. And then we'll say response is equal to cast input prompt. Now, before we move on, there's one thing that we have to notice. There's the possibility that we haven't specified what type of function we want to uh, apply to this input function call here. So in the event that we don't do that, then we just want the input function to be converted to just a string. So if it's none, then we can't actually convert it to a string because it's going to be converted to none. So here we're just going to put this in parentheses and we'll say cast or str. And so what that basically does is that if cast is a falsy value, or in other words, if cast is none, it's going to not use this function, but it's just going to use the string function. And then we're putting these in parentheses, so then that can be the function itself that will be calling this input function here. Now, after we have this response line, we need to check if our condition is satisfied. So assert condition is none. So that's if we haven't been provided a condition, in which case we don't actually need to check anything, or condition response. So condition is going to be a function that returns either a true or false. And basically what assert does is it checks to see if something is true. And if it's true, it's going to continue the code. But if it's false, it's going to throw an assertion error. And so that's actually why we're using a try except block, because the moment we throw that assertion error, we can catch it with that except block. So if we don't run into any errors here, we're just going to return response because we were successfully able to cast it and the condition was satisfied. Now, in the event that either line four or line five through any errors, we want to catch any of those. So we'll say accept and we'll just allow it to catch any sort of error. We'll leave it up to Python to catch that. So we'll say accept and then we just want to relay our error message to the user. So we'll say print error message or invalid input try again. And so this is just another form of this truthy falsy statement here. So if error message is none, that means we're just going to ignore what was here. And we're just going to evaluate this expression here, which is simply a string. But if error message is not none, then we're going to use whatever is in error message. And we're not going to use this invalid input generic string. And that should be all for our function. All right, let's go ahead and check out some tests for this. So we'll run the same test that we used before. We'll say name is equal to get input. And here we'll just give a prompt. So we'll say prompt is equal to enter your name because that's all we really need. There's nothing else that we have to check for. There's no condition we need to check. We don't have to cast this to anything but a string and there's no error message that we have to give. So that will be our name. And then we can also check for the age. So here's where we're going to actually do a little bit of manipulation of types and conditions. So we'll say age is equal to get input. So we'll say our prompt is equal to enter your age. And then here we're going to also add two more parameters. Cast is equal to int. So we're going to convert it to an integer. And then we'll say condition is equal to lambda x. x is greater than zero. So checking to see if our value is greater than zero. And here we don't have to provide any custom error message. So we'll leave that parameter to be defaulted. And then we can say height is equal to get input. And here we're going to make use of all the parameters. Prompt is equal to enter your height in inches. And then we can say cast is equal to float because we want it to be a float. And then we'll say condition. Again, we'll check if x is greater than zero because otherwise we don't have a valid height. And then our custom error message will be that's not a valid height. And of course, it's not a very descriptive error message, but you can provide anything that you want for this. Now that we've gotten this personal information, let's also try to do some list math just to show that we can do some more complex things with the function that we created. So we'll say numbers is equal to get input. And here we'll say prompt is equal to enter integers. And we'll try to cast this to a list of integers. And I've created another video on how to convert input to a list of integers. So be sure to check that out. But we're just going to quickly write that one liner here. So cast is equal to lambda line list map int line dot split at spaces. So what this does is basically it's going to 
provide us a line as our parameter, and that's going to be provided by this response here. And so this line, we're going to split it at spaces. And then for every item, that's what we're doing with this map function. For every item in our line, in our line list, we're going to convert that item to an integer, and we're going to return a new list of that item. And then here, we don't need any custom condition, but we can include an error message. So we'll say error message is equal to invalid input. And here we'll say make sure to separate your integers with a single space. And so that's what we can do for our test values. And let's just print these to see what we get at the end. So we'll say print name, age, height, and then we'll just print numbers as well. And then we can also see that we can do some math with these numbers. So let's say I just want to find the sum of all these numbers. So I'll just say sum numbers. And that's all we have to do here. Let's go ahead and run this. So here we can enter our name. Let's say it's John Smith. And let's say I entered an invalid age like we did at the beginning, maybe something like that. And it's going to keep giving me invalid input until I enter a valid age. So maybe if I enter negative 11, that's still not valid because our condition asks for our number to be greater than zero. So let's say we enter instead 20. Well, now that's going to pass. So we're going to move on to the next line, which is line 14. And line 14 asks us for our height in inches. So we'll just say 76.5. And then for our integers, let's say I enter 0, 9, 8, 7, 6, and then maybe a few extra stuff like A, E, F. Well, that's still invalid input because all of these need to be integers as specified by our cast. So here again, maybe we might say 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. And this time all of these numbers are actually numbers. They're all integers. So line 18 passes and we proceed to lines 22 and 23 where we are printing our variables. So we have John Smith, we have 20 and 76.5. And then on the next line, we have 76543 as our list of integers, followed by the sum of those integers, which is 25. So that's it for this video, and I hope this was helpful.